Hello and welcome to Slippery People. I'm Liliana Velasquez and we are here at Wave.Studios recording our weekly interview series of wonderful artists of different walks of life that pass through Sunday Slips. With me today is the very talented and prolific a business, human, community member, John O'Reilly. John O'Reilly, welcome. Hello. Thank you very much. Great to be here. <laughs> yeah. You look fantastic, by the way. Oh, You're going to a gala later. I, uh, I'm going to a hot sauce festival. Ah. And I want it to look like an explosion. Me too. <laughs> yeah. What a surprise. What a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> John, you have been supporting Sunday Slips basically an anonymously, but not anonymously, because I guess not many people know that you're the face of Crazy Bastard Sauce. Um, I don't know about the face, but well. yeah, yeah, it's, it's my. <laughs> Is it's it my your company. mustache on the? No, no. I've only recently had this. I, I didn't have one before. Uh, the logo is just a fictional person, a kind of fictional crazy bastard. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looks like. It like ah. Yeah, that's what it's supposed. To. I wanted to make it look like the Pringles guy, but insane. Yes, you yeah. achieved that. Good. You definitely <laughs> achieved that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you've been supporting Sunday Slips for the past, since we began with a weekly raffle of your trio of hot sauces package, which yeah. is one of our big, I mean, people freak out over it. Great. We, <laughs> Great. I love that it's part of Sunday Slips every yeah. week, no matter every what. Every week, no matter what. <laughs> you can win three hot sauces. Actually, we have a repeat winner here this evening in the studio. <laughs> and also you were a performer for a long time before you got so busy in your life. Yeah. I hope that you're still performing. I do, well, I, I wouldn't say performing because I never got like a huge kick out of performing in front of people, but I do oh. like to play, I do like to play. Yeah, music. you always came in with your little ukulele, ukulele at the yeah. beginning. I play some guitar as well at home, you know, I just like playing, but so, it's been a while since I performed, that's right. There is a very meditative uh, aspect to playing at home alone, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. I haven't been able to manage that with my bass. I'm like, nobody's watching. Boom, boom. You need to get on stage. <laughs> um, how did we meet? How did Sunday Slips trans... Because I think we met before Sunday Slips yeah. at Buzz Club. Yeah, well, definitely. Um, I remember Buzz Club. I remember when uh, Sunday Slips started. And I don't know if it was like a clean cut and you started Sunday Slips or if it was kind of a crossover. There was like a crossover, but mm -hmm. there was a, a, as mentioned with Molly's interview last week. <laughs> last week. <laughs> um, There was Toast, which was run toast. by Daniel Stern yeah. for a few weeks. But it was weird because he would toast bread yeah. on stage. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Just getting a concept in. We're going to do an, we're going to do, uh, an open stage with a twist. And yeah. the twist is toast. <laughs> If your time's up, the toast is burnt. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. That was it, right. Um, well, I guess around that time, or just before it, I had a, an open mic for everything except guitar, and that was called Yuki Boogie. Yes! Oh, I remember Yuki Boogie. It so was also at Lagari. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that was really fun. And it's, it's an example of something where if you remove options, it becomes more interesting. It's so true. So there's a lot of performers who would have come in and played guitar because that's probably their main instrument. But when you tell them they can't play guitar, they bring like a hang drum or a mandolin or something in, instead. Oh, we had the craziest okay. instrument, instruments there. But it was kind of focused on ukulele. Which is, you know, a fun kind of, you don't have to be good at it kind of instrument. Ukulele allows a little bit of quirkiness Absolutely. and like character of the person to pop through a bit more. I think yeah. you can also not be so good at the instrument. Definitely. That's why I started learning. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I've played guitar since I'm 12, but I'm, I haven't got any better since I'm maybe 13. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could play some cards and that's it. And I've never got much better at it. And, and With the guitar, when you kind of pull out a guitar, people expect you to be good oh, at yeah, it. Oh, yeah, they expect you to be like like with the one long nail, like... Oh, <laughs> the one long nail know, gives me the... Oh. But yeah, when you pull out a ukulele, it's like, all right, you know, the expectations are low, and that's a great place to have them. <laughs> <laughs> that should be on a Tinder profile. <laughs> expectations are low. And that should be are your expectations place. low? Lower them more, please. <laughs> We're going to have a great time. <laughs> Just show up with a little... Cowbell. <laughs> I love bells. Yeah. Um, so then, you, what, what happened to you, Kabuki? Well, yeah, like you said, I got busy. Yeah. And I was doing it with um, Alex Hyatt, um, who's a masseur. And he I know he gave me some very good massages. He's good, isn't he? Very good. Yeah, he can get rough. Very strong. Very strong. Yeah, I actually, the second time I went to him, I knew to say, because I like the pain, mm -hmm. but then I was in pain at home. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It was like a bit. You too... don't want it to last that, the long. No, that long no, yeah. Think. I was like, ooh, that's a lot of toxins coming out of my body. Yeah, like totally. some of them should have remained. But he's very good with that kind of instruction. Yes, yeah. I, I had to learn to give the instruction the second time. Yeah. So he got busy with with his massage practice as well, and we both we'd both done it for years, and we kind of 
got everything we wanted out of it. And then we, we passed the torch, so to say. We kind of There was a few people who, who were regulars and we passed it on to them and they were happy to take Has it Have given it to this woman, this artist woman? Rahel. Um, Rahel, Rahel, yes. She was one of them, yeah. Um, 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 Alfred Ladylike. Yes, that's who I was thinking. thinking yeah, because they were in Donut Hearts. Donut Hearts, yeah. So we really passed it on to Rahel, but then she was in this band Donut Heart and, and she kind of brought in sort of friends yeah. and, and band members and it... It, you know, it's stopped now. It's it's somebody dropped the ball. So mm. I met with Alex recently and said, like, we we don't want to do it, but we, we need to kind of reignite it. We need to get it started again. Maybe just do one show and pull somebody out of the crowd and say, right, it's yours now. It's yours now. Now just you back out of the have room. to do this show every Sunday. I mean Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking for no. no? No, I don't I don't do the ukulele. Uh -huh. I wish if somebody gave me a ukulele, I'd probably try. I almost bought a ukulele last week, but then I didn't. Yeah. I was like, play the bass more, Liliana. Play the bass. Bass suits you, yeah. yeah. I'm not saying you play the bass, but I. I, can... I played with Donut Hearts at New Year's oh, Eve once a while ago, um, and I, I, yeah, I, I picked it up for a bit, and then the universe gifted me two beautiful basses. One of them with my name encrusted in like seashell, whatever that's right. called, conch. Conch. Um, Rhinestone conch. Cho cha conch. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then I think it was just so much pressure when like somebody gifted me two bases at the same time, and I was like, yeah. I am not going to touch them. <laughs> um, but you got it. Yeah, I do. You I did. I, I have yes. to go back to. I have to go back to it. Um, Can I ask you something? Yes, please. Somebody's asking me a question. Uh, what, like, no matter what, Sunday slips, no matter yeah. what. It's crazy. Like you've done it for years, no matter what. And what's, nine years. Nine years with. Have you ever missed one? I've traveled, traveled and toured. I've always had somebody, between Winton and I, we've always had somebody there that runs yeah. it. It's happened no matter what. No matter what. And when the pandemic, it was online, as yeah. you know. Which is crazy. Like, the, to keep the motive. My question is, where does the motivation come? What I motivates think you to the, do it no matter what? My life has been so chaotic that the few things that I can make consistent um, are, are almost an obsessive quality of mine. Also, I, I have a very strong personality. <laughs> So often I don't feel like the spaces that are provided for practicing are spaces that welcome all of me. Yeah. Not that they don't welcome me, but I have a strong belief that go where, go where you're celebrated. Yeah. And I celebrate myself. So I have found many other open mics and places where I can practice, but not consistently. Right. And this was my opportunity to have a regular spot where I could practice my craft, grow, meet the community, offer the support that I got in New York City in the style that is very New York City, which is that no matter what, you're going to do it. You know, like, we're here, it's consistent. You got to be consistent. You got to repeat things. I think that repetition is really important, especially if things are of value. I think a lot of times people are like, oh, you already said that. And it's like, yeah, but I'm repeating it because it's important, because it's valuable, because change takes repetition. Um, just even having our own mindset open to things, often we have to... Self-care is repetition. You know, like mm. when you look in the mirror, you're like, you've got this, you're strong enough, you're smart enough, you can walk into that room. That's repetition. Or your little ritual maybe where you always do things in a certain way and make you feel kind of good. Exactly. So Sunday Slips for me was just like a little bit of keeping New York City with me yeah. and, uh, and that hustle that New York City had without having to run around the city. Um, and then it just, it also kind of became its own thing. Yeah. You know, I was semi-joking. I thought it was a smart tagline yeah. because I was like oh since everybody's so busy with social media online and like all of this I didn't want to do that either I wanted word of mouth I wanted people to feel that there's a place that you can make mistakes because it's not a showcase and it's not all it's like the world's international best comics mm -hmm. you know it's which, a stage and it's you a have stage, the stage and you get to practice and you get to be bad or good mm -hmm. Um, so the no matter what was kind of based on like on that, like no matter how you're feeling, no matter how hard life is, there's have to be little things that you keep sacred. Yeah. Mm. And it just got bigger than I expected. Yeah. It got momentum. It you, got can't, mom you can't it, stop it now. It's, even if you yeah, it's a little to. culty. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like some people started calling it church. I was like, no, we do not use the C word unless it's cunt. <laughs> there's no, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it just and I and Brilliant. and now I'm kind of proud of it, but exhausted. You should be. <laughs> it's, uh, it's inspirational. Yeah. 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 We've seen the we've seen the scene grow. We've seen the groups change. We've seen people quit comedy and then not quit comedy. Yeah. And of course, everybody that performs in Berlin in some, one way or another has probably been there. They must have passed through, done at least I one mean, or two shows. I mean, if they haven't, who are they? Who are they? Even? Who yeah. are they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. 
And so, yeah, so now we just keep going. Yeah, yeah well done. Might never stop. Might never stop. you the next question um you you have a restaurant you're creative you have a cat i have to mention that because i'm a crazy cat lady and uh, what would you tell young john o'reilly um I, i would actually tell him to trust your creativity 
because for a long time I didn't trust it. I thought I had to be good at... I, I wasn't good in school. I'm, I'm not good at learning things, actually. I, I, it's hard for me to retain information. I have to do a lot of repetition, like you said, to, to <laughs> retain information, you know, dyslexia and all these kind of things, mm -hmm, right? Me too. Um, maths, no good. I'm actually terrible at business because you need, you need to be good at those things. Oh, I always thought you were good at math, just because you're a man. <laughs> no, 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 really. And also, you know, <laughs> my sense of direction is non-existent. I will get, lo I'll get lost leaving this building. Oh, let's get lost together. <laughs> <laughs> so there's all these things that, like, I thought I had to be better at because I wasn't good at them, and I spent so long. But then I was like, you know what? One thing I am is creative, and it, whether it's with music or art or just an idea, developing a concept, and just trust that. And taste buds, I mean. Taste buds, yeah, yeah, that's part of it, exactly. <laughs> That's a major creative tool of yours. Yeah. So only when I learned to really trust my creativity did things start to really work for me. Was there a moment that you recall in your life where you were like, I'm creative? Like, that you were like, wow, this is really something that's always been with me. Um, well, I went, I went to art school. And, and there I was a bit disillusioned because I was surrounded by people who were artists. They're mm -hmm. like, they, they wake up in the morning, they have to create. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't have that, not with art anyway. Uh, and I was like, okay, I'm going to do a painting and I enjoy it, but I don't have this drive that some other people have. So then I kind of, I thought maybe I'm not that creative in that way. But then I kind of went on doing other things. And when, yeah, was, was there a moment when I said, okay, I'm creative? Yeah, it's, when, it's when, I, when I noticed that what I really like is a concept and just letting it sit in my head and develop, unfold into something. Mm -hmm. So for a while I did graphic design and illustration and somebody would come to me with a concept that they have or they want to advertise something. And after a while, I learned how to ask the right questions about that. Like, who are you talking to with this? What is it that you're, right. um, who are you talking to? And what is it that you're telling them? And that's kind of all the information that you need. And then I'd start with the little idea of an image. Maybe it would be like a visual pun and then things would fold out of it. And then I thought, well, this really happens in my head quite yeah. nicely, you know? Yeah, so I guess. I I'm tend to develop the same way. There's like a concept and it just lays there. And then there's another part that I don't think relates to it. And then yeah, all of totally. a sudden they connect and I'm like, oh, those two make sense. Yeah. Um, do you find that this, this creativity that we call, you know, being an artist or not being an artist has also to do with this repetition in practice? Because there are moments in my life where I paint and, and I don't feel like I'm a painter, right? But there are moments when I'll find an idea and I just can't stop doing it. And so then I'll do 30 pieces of which only maybe 10 are very good, mm -hmm. 10 are mediocre, and 10 are like, well, you should paint over that. <laughs> <laughs> but I have 30 pieces, and I didn't even think I would get to 30 pieces yeah. just because I have this like push within me. And it's not that I'm less of an artist before that, it's just that I became more prolific. Yeah. And so then you could see the balance between, when I look at artists like um, that have succeeded in history and been recognized through society, it's mostly that they're prolific. Yeah. Um, I think it's, a, it's about curiosity and being obsessed by something. So when you're prolific, if you're painting the same thing over and over again, you've kind of got a bit obsessed by it. You're looking at it from every angle and you're thinking about it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, something that's kind of caught my attention recently is these plastic chairs, plastic lawn chairs, because it's kind of getting into summer and you see them around a bit more. They're taken out of cellars. They're like, they're, they might be sitting around a, a garden all, all year getting, getting moldy and things mm -hmm. growing on them and then people are kind of dusting them off. So... So I've been looking at a lot of these around the place and I've been painting them and stuff. And that's kind of one little thing that I don't know why I like it. Yeah. But the more I do it, the more I look at it, the more I think what it's about. It's about optimism. It's about, um, it's about kind of, you know, spring and rebirth and all this kind of thing. And it's about like, I don't know, there's stuff in there that cheers I haven't figured already. out. <laughs> yeah, cheers, like this. But, um, but then there might be something else. It's the curiosity and kind of allowing your mind to focus on something. Then you might link that with something else, which in my example, hasn't happened yet, but there's something else that I'm going to probably make a hot sauce with, you know, link it in with, I don't know, I'll find a way to, something, something will, will hit together, two yeah. little ideas will hit together. When, when you least expect it, it's yeah. like the spark, that yeah. like match spark. Indeed, yeah, you're, you're, you're walking around or you're on the train or something and you look out the window and something, something will spark it. Yeah, and, and then if you don't write it down right away, you forget it. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, now what happened to what that was, idea? What was it again? You, you, you wake up in the brilliant. morning. And, uh, you know, like a dream, it kind of floats away. But, um, yeah, it's fun when that happens. And I think it, it, repetition is a big part of it because mm -hmm. that's the process that you develop, that's the process that you have to make the idea migrate somewhere else. Yeah, I agree. Oh, wonderful. Well, I, I have seen some of your paint, paintings lately. Yeah, I've only really started painting again after 20 years. I mean, yeah, I, did it in I think there was like a window. Um, yeah. 
looking out. I've only recently started to name them because, you know, um, I've shown a couple of them. So one, that one was called French Windows in France are just windows. French windows. French windows in France are just windows. <laughs> French <laughs> windows in France are just windows. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, and so what's in for the future? I mean, I feel like you've already lived three different lives in just the short time that I've known you. Yeah. One, two, three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what's, well, okay. Uh, with, this, with the hot sauce, that's, that's not a, a transitionary thing. That's going to stay. That's forever. That's forever. I mean, we've got a team. There's, we've got a, you know. It's been growing. It's been growing. You know, we've been letting it grow. The momentum, just like Sunday slips, it just, you get out of its way. You let it happen, yeah. you know. Um, Stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> <laughs> So um, that's going to keep happening, and I, and I am going to be involved with that. But um, the team that we have really does all their job better than me. So for me, it's more like um, a conceptual thing, you know, maybe coming up with new products or where it's going in the future. Uh, the restaurant has also got its own momentum, and people love that, and I love it too. That's, some, that's I mean, I've always pitched you a crazy bastard burlesque team. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we should definitely do that. Time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like um, sexy girls, titties, tassels, and hot sauce. And hot sauce, just like. What, like a, a <laughs> bath of hot sauce or where does the hot sauce hot come sauce into? Hot sauce wrestling night. Wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We should do it. Inflatable I mean. pool, hot sauce, and yeah. crying babes. Crying the babes, hot. there's going to be a lot of tears. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of tears. It's sexy, I swear. <laughs> yeah, all of that, all those ideas. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, what's, that's what I'm up to, I suppose. All right. But now, you know, I, I have time, like... Like I didn't before, when the first few years of the business, I was really... Um, Hands-on, you have yeah, to hands be, on, or else... Exactly. It, it... So now I've got time to let the ideas float around a bit, and yeah, we... Now we... your hot sauces are everywhere. They're not just in Berlin anymore. Yeah. People can buy them from around the world. You can buy them online and get them shipped to you wherever you are. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, but we also have a, like a distributor in the UK who travels around the UK. I'm going there in, in, in about two weeks, actually. What about the people who are not from the UK, like my audience in the United States of America? Oh, really? Well, I mean, that's, that's one... You can order with us online, and it can be shipped the to, shipping the, to the US. Costs. But it takes a while, and actually... Um, a few weeks ago, we got uh, some photos of a package that arrived there, which looks like it had just been rolled over by a tank. But so the, bo the bottles were The bottles were, were completely smashed. You know, oh. we'll just refund it, we'll send more out, but it's like whatever it's they're so doing. It's so sad when you get something like that, you've I been know. waiting for it. Yeah. So it is a bit of a bit tricky to, um, to send to the US, and we don't have a US distributor because uh, in the US, people like to sue. Oh. And when you classic USA. Because of that, the the public liability insurance would be like way more than what it is now. It's already kind of a lot that we pay but why for. Why does hot sauce need like what 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 are I'm, I'm very curious here because I'm very confused. Like do mm. people sue you for burning their own tongue no, for using it in the wrong place? Who knows? You'll find a way. The Americans will find a way to sue <laughs> hey, for something. I'm asking that question because I know someone that put the hot sauce on their penis. Yeah. In a show. On purpose. Yes. And they had a certain degree burn. Yeah, well, I don't know. I'm, I, don't know if they, I don't know if they could sue for that because it's like, <laughs> you did what? <laughs> but no, just, uh, I mean, this is boring business stuff. But if you're selling a product um, and you're the, the seller of it in that country, you need to have public liability insurance in that country. And um, it's mm. insanely expensive to do that in America. And it's just like, we can only make so much hot sauce. So we don't need to be in the No, US. no, you don't. I mean, you're already we, making a lot. We, yeah, we, we, we look after Europe. All right. Yeah. Well, USA, my sisters, especially because they love the hot sauce. I'll keep sending you your packages. There you go. That's the best way. Um, but I guess that's all the questions I have. Wow, that's a lot. And yeah. that's not... Oh. Lot. It's been so lovely having you Thank here. Thank you. Uh, we are having the yearly ch chili festival, uh, which yes. happens every year. So if you're going to miss it uh, this weekend, just look forward to it next weekend. And crazy There's going to be one in July, I believe, by the beach and Sage Club. Um, yeah. When he says beach... He means a pile of sand by a canal of water. Yeah, fake Just beach. Just for the people who are not in Germany. We have, a beach. <laughs> we have a beach too. It's a real beach. It's a real Berlin beach. has a beach. It's by the sea. Everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so nasty. I can't. <laughs> My Miami, Miami Liliana is like, no, that's, that's not, not a beach. A beach. Um, but for everyone online or people locally based, if you want to check out Crazy Bastard Sauce, they are on Vesa Straza number. 168. 168. And uh, they do get really full, so come, just come on early. by. Just, uh, yeah, everybody, come early. Everybody insists on eating at 8 p.m. Just eat at come 6 Come like me, 7. 6 p.m. Pass by. There's yeah. tables are just popping out. Great margaritas. 
And uh, we're looking forward to having you and your ukulele back at Sunday Slip sometime yeah, soon. I'm up for it. And uh, have a wonderful time tonight at the Chili Festival. Thank you very much. Thank you for being part of Slippery People. Guys, thank you all so much. We'll see you next week here at Slippery People with Wave Dots Studios. And uh, hopefully there'll be a little clip to check out Jono performing in this episode. We'll be getting that from you soon. If you like what you see, comment, like, share, and just continue supporting us with all your love. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Outside of Chicago is the fattest part of town. And if you go down there, you better just beware of a man named Leroy Brown. Now, Leroy, more than trouble, he stood about six foot four. All the downtown ladies called him Sweet Top Lover, all the stills they called him Sir. He was bad, bad Leroy Brown, baddest man in the whole damn town, battered in the old King Kong. Meaner than a junkyard dog. Now Leroy, he gambler, and he likes his fancy clothes. He likes to wear his diamond rings in front of everybody's nose. He got a custom kind of devil. He got an Eldorado too. He got a 32 gun in his pocket.